We've been looking through the book of Psalms. Uh, last time we looked at... Whoa, let me just unhook my um, lapel mic. Does anybody remember what we talked about last time in Psalm 25? Or Larry? One thing is that David was focused, partially focused on praying for Israel as a whole. Yes. Anybody else? Yep. Uh, Psalm 26, first verse. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart, for thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. David, the writer and author of this psalm, as notated at the at the heading, gives us a um, the second time that we've seen in Psalms for a call for the judgment or the trying of God. Now, uh, there are people, a couple different commentaries that I've read, and some stuff on different historical sites that say that this may may or may not. There's no notation with this. So it may or may not have been written when he was on the run from Absalom. If it is, it ties to what we talked to last week, if you remember, uh, with Psalm chapter 25. And David was on the move from Absalom. And David's call here is for... It's kind of a prayer, but it's also to locate the source, if you will, of the trials that were facing him. David's first assumption was not that it was Absalom's fault. That's not who he asked to try. He doesn't say, uh, dear Lord, if you would, please smite Absalom down because that would, be a real, that would make things real easy and nice for me. Uh, no, he, who is he asking for judgment for? He is asking judgment for himself. He wants he, he he starts it with judge, and then he says he wants to examine, and then he wants to be tried. The automatic reflex of a lot of Christians is for us to seek external source for our internal problems. That we always we always look about us instead of looking at us. In fact, we're going to get to we talked when we we did when we did a study of the tabernacle about uh, the basin that you washed hands when you first entered the tra- tabernacle. It was actually forged of mirrors, and the the symbology there and the and the point there is for while you're washing your hands for you to reflect on your own sin. And modern day Christians are incapable of seeing themselves as a problem. It's always external. Why are, why are bad things? Well, it's got to be the president. It's got to be, it's got to be the other members of the church. It's got to be, um, it, it, it's got to be money or, or, uh, or, or the job situation or my friends or uh, family members. It's always got to be somebody else, but it's never you. Right. Heaven forbid that you find yourself in the wrong. David offers a very unique perspective to himself. It's like, I want to make sure that it's not me. He's looking, and he, he, call, he uses, and we've, we've talked about this before too, he says, judge me, and then he addresses the Lord. He says he, want, he, want, he wants a person of supreme and superior, the, the, the measuring stick by which all else is measured, to place the judgment. To be to be the to cross examine. Now, sometimes and 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 there are a host of reasons for bad things to happen to you. You know, and this is this is a, a, a thing that I think a lot of people don't get, especially Christians, because we like we like to try to see things and everything. Sometimes bad stuff just happens, and and it just happens, and that's that's life. You know, you, uh, you know, you, you get hit, get a football helmet, and keep moving. You know, it's uh, that's uh, that's how we that's how it goes. But we can look at examples in the scripture, like Job, for instance. 
did Job do anything? The, preempt, the preemptive nature of Job's trial, and a lot of people say, well, Job had... And if you read the book of Job, you can see maybe some issues that Job had with his life. But the, pre, the, the, the preempting, the, the inciting incident of Job's trials had nothing to do with Job. It had everything to do with, first of all, God trying Job, and second of all, the, really, God proving something to the devil. Because the devil's argument about Job was, well, you know, why, why does he serve you? He, 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 he has all the reason in the world to serve you. Everything falls at his feet. He's got wealth and riches and lands, and, 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 and more than that, there is a wall of protection bounded about him. It says, and, and the Lord says, okay, I'm game. I'm game if you're game. I'll pull, all the, I'll pull all the barriers down. You can do whatever you want, but you can only go this far. Leave him enough breath to say whose fault it is, and we'll find out what Job, what Job is made out of. Read the end of Job chapter 1. It said that Job in his, it says that he first of all he says the Lord giveth he taketh away blessed be the name of the Lord and then he also says in all this Job never charged God falsely. Job looked at the trials of the Lord. Job looked at things that were coming into his life as a as as a as a place to glorify the Lord. Brother Kraft in his in his message on Wednesday night talked about uh, afflictions and the blessedness of, uh, of, of being afflicted. Sometimes when we're being tried, it is for no other reason than God wants to use you as a tool. You know what? We, we continually, and I just did, we continually go back to Job as an example of someone who really took a beating and then stood up and said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. We, we, we keep going back to that. In fact, it is dated as probably one of the oldest books in Scripture. For thousands of years it has stood a testament of what a Christian can take and then what he should be giving back. And sometimes that's why you're being tried. David also wanted to make sure, hey, let's make sure it's not a problem with me. You know what? Absalom could have been laid at David's feet. David was a, a phenomenal person in light of the entirety of his life through the scriptures. We, 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 again, it, it is very easy to look at these heroes of the faith from a thousand foot view and say, yeah, we can look at their entire life and say, yeah, they lived well. But David was a murderer and an adulterer and a fornicator and he, um, and he did some truly awful things in his life. He was responsible for the death of thousands of Israelites when he counted the people. He did some terrible things. So could have the Absalom situation been laid at his feet? I think David was thinking, yeah, this has got to be me. Because I'm sure he was looking back in hindsight and thought, you know what, the last time something I did something terrible, the Lord sent the death angel and like thousands of people died. So let's make sure that this isn't me. So he asked the Lord, let's, let's, let's slap down the measuring stick. Let's see how far I measure up. He goes on, he says, it, to, it, to be examined, to be, to, be, uh, to be scrutinized on every little thing. We don't like to have things pinpointed out to us. Uh, we live in, for, for whatever reason, and, I, and the older I get, the less, the more irritated this makes me, and the less that I just put up with it at this point, is sugarcoating things for people and, 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 and using social niceties just for the sake of social niceties. I, I'm, I'm to the point where I'm done with it. I'm just going to start telling you what I think of you and, and what, and what, because it, truth cuts, but it can cut both ways. And, and iron sharpening iron, you know, it, the Bible says that, 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 that friends will do that. I am uh, probably one of my best friends in this world is my brother-in-law, Will, and we give each other all kinds of, of trouble all the time. We're, we're, we're constantly picking at one another. Why? Because we are friends, and he's not going to let me get away with anything, and I'm not going to let him get away with it. It doesn't matter if it's a joke. It doesn't matter if, if, if it's a ha-ha. You, you, you did something stupid, and I'm never letting you live it down. 
And in the same way, these days we just want we want everything to be cushioned and 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 a nice you know uh, a, a bubble about it. And 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 well, somebody does something, we're, we're, we may say something passive aggressive about it. Uh, we may we may get we may we may instead of just going to them and say, hey, this is the problem. This is what you did, and I'm not happy about it. And a lot of times, I've I've de- I've determined with that I found with this is a lot that person doesn't even know what they did, and they will apologize to you for it. And they will try to make it right. The, the, the opposite can't happen. They may just throw it back in your face. And you know that person probably isn't your friend. How, how do we get sharper if we, if we don't put the whetstone to the blade? we got to quit sugarcoating things for people. You, you, we're, we're fine with standing behind pulpits and saying, sodomy is a sin, fornication is a sin, you, you, the, the, this, that, and your, 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 your skirts don't need to be uh, up to your buttocks, and, 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 and you're, you know, you don't, you, uh, we, we're fine with saying all that stuff. But when it comes down to a, a, a ministering among our own people, well, I don't want to say anything to Brother Ken. It might hurt his feelings. Right. Ken, I'll tell you. And I hope you'd tell me. We 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 got you know. Look at our Lord; He was a very poignated man. He did not mince words. He was kind. He was loving. But he also he also told people to you know get behind me. <laughs> you're you're an offense to me. Uh, he, he told he told people uh, he told he told the he, he told the Pharisees on multiple occasions what they actually were. Examine me, O Lord, and try my the try the my reins and my heart. Finally, David wanted to see how supple he was whenever it came to the leading of God. He wanted to know if God pulls left, am I going left, or my or if I'm struggling to the right? We talked a lot about this in the last lesson about what plow horses or, or, or plow animals of any kind that aren't broke can do to the person doing the plowing, can do to the equipment, and can do to themselves. There can be injury, there can be uh, uh, financial loss, and there can be death for everybody involved. He wanted to make sure that when, when he went back, when, when the fight against Absalom came, that he was in the right. That he didn't need to, you know, David was in a very similar situation, well, similar to his own, his previous situation with Saul, but also in a situation where I'm sure in his mind he was thinking, is Absalom the next king? Am I standing in his way the way that Saul stood in mine? He needed to make sure. Because if the will of the Lord was for him to go left and just leave king in behind, he needed to go left. He wanted to make sure, and then he says, uh, 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 "And my heart, for thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy tr- in thine truth." Now he, in judging, he wanted to let God know that he David perceived that he'd done right, that he'd done everything that he could do. Now, if we go on to verse four, for I, uh, for I have not uh, uh, sat with uh, vain persons, neither will I go with uh, dissemblers, I have hated the congregation of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. Now, he's giving his pedigree. He said, Lord, this, these are the things I've done. First of all, in verse 3, he says, I have walked in thy truth. As far as I'm aware, Lord, I do want you to check everything out. I do want you to measure everything up, but here's my pedigree. This is where I have seen myself. And he goes on to say, I, I, and then he says, "For thy loving kindness is uh, uh, for I uh, for uh, verse four. I have not, I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go with dissemblers." Now, this word "dissemblers" is kind of different. I thought when I first read it because I was just glancing over it that it said "disassemblers," but that's not what it says. It's it's it's, it's uh, it is a word in English language that is is a person who professes beliefs. And opinions that he or she does not hold to hold in order to conceal his or her feelings or motives. These are Pharisees. <laughs> For if you don't if you don't know who this is, so David says first of all, I have not sat with vain persons. Neither will I go in with these people that are fake, fake people. 
There's a lot of fake people. Um, they're, 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 and, and they're just as sweet and as nice as they can be. Most of the time they present well, but they are not your friends. They are, they are, and, and, and David was making the case that this is not where we need to find ourselves, these people. Now, you may be in one of two situations. You may be like David, or you may be one of these people. Now, when he says that he goes down with these people, he lumps them in with evildoers and, and wicked. So if you're sitting there and you say, well, I believe that a woman's place is in the home, and then you go out and you work eight to nine hours a day and you're never there, it's fake. It's fake. If you go out there, every, if, if, if you stand up in front of the church every Sunday and say, I believe X, Y, and Z, and secretly think, boy, whenever I finally get all I need out of these people, I'm vamoosing, that's fake. If you get up and you... If you get up and you make a bunch of bold statements, if you get out there and you do the work of the Lord, and it all is in the pretense of selfishness or to be seen, David said he wouldn't have anything to do with him. This was a measure of how good a person he was. And then he goes on further and says, I have hated the congregation of evildoers. They don't need a lot of explanations. And I will not sit with the wicked. Now, that does not mean that you can't sit down next to a lost person or even a wicked person. If you find yourself in a, in a public scenario on a, a public train or transit or something and you're sitting next to a prostitute, you, you, well, I guess I'm, I'm going to have to ask forgiveness for that. That's not what he's saying here. The word sit there is actually, actually if you translate it, it means to like link up with, to, 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 uh, to become into contract with, to, to marry, to, to, uh, to make your place with. So David says, not only have I, you know, don't I do these things, but these wicked people, I don't set up my life inside of them. I don't make my, make my home with wicked people. When I'm not at church, I'm not hanging out at every honky-tonk and, and, and bar in the country uh, with my real friends. I'm not, I'm not going to do these things. I will wash my hands in innocency, so will I compass thine altar, O Lord. Now, verse 6 does call to mind that wash basin in the tabernacle. Now, remember, in David's time, that's all they had. And he says, in addition, first of all, I don't believe I've done anything. First of all, Lord, try me. Second of all, I don't believe I've done anything. And here's the reasons why, but just in case. But just in case I find myself falling short, he says in innocency. Now it doesn't. It, it doesn't. It does. You know, in our law, in 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 the United States regular law, in Tennessee's law, if you break a law in innocence, you're still guilty of it. But what David is trying to say here is, if there is a law that I've broken that I didn't know about, and that's why. And, and God does, he, you know, there, there are a lot of innocent people in countries that have never heard of the Lord that are sinning every day and they will die and they will go to hell for it. And that's just a simple fact of it. They're as innocent as the day is long, but innocency is not, does not make you free of the law. If that was the case, we'd probably take all these little ones and take them out to glory as quick as they were born. But that does not, that, that, those two things do not compute. No, what, he, what he's saying here is if Absalom is attacking me because of something I did without knowledge of your word and your law and I'm openly breaking this, this is my hand washing, Lord. Let me first wash and while I'm washing, let me look down to that basin made completely of mirrors. Let me look down and see where I'm wrong. Show me where I'm wrong. 
Show me where the, you know, uh, the other day my wife sent me a picture of my son AJ, and somehow he'd gotten barbecue sauce right here on his forehead. And she would, he wouldn't let her wipe it off. He wouldn't let her do, do anything. But he, he was blissfully unaware that he had, you know, one of those Indian, you know, uh, dots on his forehead made of barbecue sauce. A mirror would have told him what his issue was. Not that he would have cared. But a mirror would have told him what his issue was. And in the same way, when we look down into that wash basin, when we look into God's Word and we say, you know, I think I'm doing pretty good, and then we go, oh, wait a minute. (laughs) Actually, I'm not doing as well as I thought I was. Here is the open, gaping wound that I couldn't see but for the mirror that is in my life that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell all of, all of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the inhabitation of thy house and the place wherein thine altar dwelleth. The, his innocency, his, his, his washing, he wanted to be able to he wanted to be clean, and if you look at verse 7, it said that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell all thy wondrous works. You know, if, and he's not old enough to do this, but let's just say, for me, for instance, let's say I had barbecue sauce on my forehead. Nobody told me anything about it. Brother Jarrett pointed out to me that I, and I'm not dirty. This is snot from my son on my, on my sleeve here, and it won't come out. I've done tried. Um, <laughs> we'll have to wait for a washing machine, but... We know that the snot exists. I, let's just say I didn't, though. Let's say Brother Jared had not pointed that out. And then I tried to give a lecture to y'all about the importance of clean clothing. That would ring pretty shallow with a guy with snot on his shirt. And what David is trying to say here is, I want to wash. I want to be clean so I can tell others about how great you are and how mighty you are and be a, a just and worthy a broadcaster of that information, to be worthy of, of that. You know, those of you that are preachers that are in this room, they, and, and, and Brother Junior, he's a teacher, and, and I'm a teacher, we are, we are given to be uh, the foremost of the broadcasters. We're all given to tell the word, but preachers are given a special place. It's like, it is, it, they're supposed to, you're required to, <laughs> uh, to, to spread the word. And you have to walk worthy of that vocation. That's why it's that, that's why it's unacceptable for regular Christians, but especially for people that are 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 hard and fat. You know, it, you always see the downfall of these people. It's, it's like oh, I thought they'd never do that. But you can ruin your rep- reputation in a moment and become unusable for the work of the Lord with a single action that goes completely against. What you're, what you're preaching. And, and you, it'll be just like this. If I try to tell you, you I can get a shirt looking spot, spotless, and you say, but you have snot on your shirt. And I said, no, but I can get it clean. I promise you I can get it clean. David wanted to eliminate that quandary by saying, I'm going to wash first and preach second. I, I want to be clean and perfect in your eyes, O Lord. That way I can tell others about you about your saving grace, and also how to be clean themselves. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. His hope was that he would not be counted, that this judgment, when it came back, when, you know, if you if you've ever been in a contest or a competition, like a, like you know, if, uh, grading something like chili or whatever, you know, a chili competition, the judges go about and they get chilies and uh, drinking milk and they're writing stuff down on clipboards and whatnot. And then the verdict comes. Who is number one? That's, that's all really anybody cares about. Nobody cares about third and second place. Nobody cares about that. Everybody wants to know who number one is, who is the best. That's a judgment. These men, these men, hopefully, on their pedigree as judges, know something about Chile. And they come back and says, by, the, by our personal measuring stick, we find this Chile to be the best. And David says, when, by your personal measuring stick, O oh Lord, I want to know 
that I'm not counted with the people that I have tried my best not to associate with, not to catch my life. Those wicked people we were talking about in verses uh, 4 and 5 there, he, want, he didn't want to be counted with those people. He, sa- he, sa- he says here in, 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 in verse 9, Gather not my soul with sinners. He prayed, this is, this is, this is the, the prayer of the verse, if you will, not to be found wanting. He says, I'm, I'm hoping that everything that I've done here will find me in your good favor. Because he was a mess. That situation with Absalom was a bad deal for a lot of people. But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth even in place in the congregations will I bless the Lord. He says, but as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. He says, I'm going to continue to do the best I can. And then he says, my foot standeth even in place. You say that it stands level, but I think a a foot in place means you're not moving anywhere. He was waiting. He was waiting for the verdict. He was waiting for the he was waiting for that final judgment. And he says, and while I'm waiting, in the congregations will I bless the Lord. So just like Job, let's go back all the way back to our first example. Job took a beating. The, de- the, the judgment of the Lord by, by means of the devil. I mean, the devil was a tool in that, in that story. If, if, you don't, if you don't read it again, if you don't get that, he was a weapon that God used to hammer Job. Job dusted himself off in the ashes, looked toward the heavens. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's what David's saying here. He says, while I'm waiting for this horrible situation to finish, while, while, you're, while you're doing the clipboard writing and the measuring and seeing where I mark up, I'm still going to continue to praise you because this may be a bad situation, but it's only for a moment. It's only for a blink of an eye. Are there any questions or comments on Psalm 26? If not, study up, live in terror. For next week, we find out how much you were able to listen. Have a good week.